how do i describe our next speaker all right so so this question is also you know applies to you as well how many of you have seen the movie swades swades do you remember the movie swades have you seen it can you just probably clap those of you who have seen so it's about shahrukh khan the amazing shahrukh khan stars in that movie and what he does is you know he is this nri who then comes back to his roots so have you seen that movie by the way so is very good all right so for those of you who haven't you should watch just not now so that's how i'd like to you know set pretext for our next speaker we have our very own mr shahrukh khan with us after laying cornerstone of sls in a hotel room in america he moved to his home state gujarat and founded sls inc ladies and gentlemen let's invite mr paresh patel the president and ceo of system level solutions on stage so the stage is all yours good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh before i begin let me tell you a little bit about sls or system level solutions System level solutions designs and develops products both hardware and software in various industry verticals. We have an office in the US that's focused on intellectual property for chip design. We have another office in the UK that provides products in the smart metering and energy space. And here in India, we have our research and development center as well as our production facilities and test facilities. Now today I'm going to be talking about the need for heterogeneous systems in automation. Oh yeah, you know, heterogeneous that always gets you a talking slot, right? Or or words like uh temporal. But anyways, um heterogeneous is just a fancy word for mixing of diverse things. So, what are the diverse things that we're looking at? So you've probably seen this slide 4 billion times by now. Um, you know, the prediction was that in 2020 that you'd have, you know, I'll concentrate on the last two, which is which is the embedded systems and uh gigabytes of data. Of course, all these predictions are over exaggerated when they're made them. But we're starting to get a bit closer. Um, you know, and 2020 is right around the corner. um but they do spill still spend uh tend to um signify that there is quite a large market and that market has now come to fruition uh there are larger numbers you know there's a large number of systems that are associated with the um, uh, embedded and intelligent systems which is smart home is a part of as well as the number amount of data that's being generated Just think about when you talk into Alexa how much data is being generated and transmitted over the cloud to Amazon servers. So all of these things lead to the various verticals. So you can see why all that data gets aggregated. You have, you know, life safety, home security, trackers, um a number of automotive communication, of course, home automation, which is what we're all here for. but it spans these are the things that are there these are the embedded systems the devices the connected devices that are generating all that data now what are those things there are sensors that are a part of a system that perform and collect data right alexa is a sensor right it just happens to take speech data in input a camera is a sensor that also is taking a picture and taking data or a temperature sensor which is very small is another sensor so how do they connect up currently what do you think uh what technologies are used what protocols are used right now I'll ask the audience that you that connect up sensors can anyone name a few yeah i heard i i heard zigbee good what else was that yes z wave so we got two What about that Wi-Fi, right? What else? So, you guys are on the right track. They have we here whoops, I'm doing the wrong slides here. Okay. Here's how you connect it all. 
Here are the different technologies that are available. So you have LTEM, you have LoRa, you have NB-IoT, you have Bluetooth, you have Zigbee, you have Z-Wave, you have Wi-Fi, and 3G PLC. Do you know, do anyone, anyone knows what um, G3 PLC is? It's a technology for power line communication in the home. So, you know, when we talk about not rewiring things, well, you can now send data across the mains power through your home and not rewire things. But th that's an up and coming where it's a, a technology that's used in the Europe for a lot of uh, building automation. And then there's six low pan. Six low pan is probably going to be used in the infrastructure here in India uh, because it's a completely open source one. But as you can see, there are so, so many choices that you have. And why are all these there? What's, what's the reason, right? Because sensors are different. Sensors have different requirements. You know, you have lots of choices and no one size fits all, right? There's no one size does not fit all. And why? Because there are key drivers uh, that are there. So if we talk about the key drivers, the key decision points on building systems with sensors, the first one is power consumption. Right? I could have a small little switch like this that uses a small little battery inside. I can have a bigger sensor. This is a heat sensor that uses a lithium cell inside. Or I can have a mains powered sensor that's there. Right? So the power consumption basically lends itself to figuring out what choices you're going to make for the sensor that you decide to use. Range, right? Now, if you're going to use a sensor, you may want a sensor that's 10 feet away or 10 kilometers away, right? Depending on what you need. So, and then the other thing about sensors and range is that let's say if you're using Zigbee, what's the effective range of Zigbee? About 30 meters, but then you put a wall and then you put other things, you put metal, and then all of a sudden that range becomes 10 meters. And then people say Zigbee doesn't work. Right? Then someone says, oh, well, Zigbee doesn't work. I know LoRa works, right? So because the range and all these things are different.